not a breed for everyone. They are loyal, courageous family dogs with a well-developed guarding instinct. Akitas are very intelligent and they learn quickly. Because many Akitas have a somewhat stubborn nature, they are not particularly noted for being top obedience dogs. Nevertheless, many Akitas have earned obedience degrees in top competition. Akitas have also been trained for police, and protection work. You will be seeing many Akitas during this presentation. Since this is a breed which varies in both type and color, you will see Akitas of many colors and variations in type. In spite of their individual strengths and weaknesses, all are good to outstanding examples of the breed. All of them will help your understanding of this breed. In general appearance, the Akita is large, powerful, and alert, with much substance and heavy bone. These characteristics should be present in all Akitas, no matter what their individual type. If it were necessary to describe the Akita in one word, dignified would suffice. Note that there is a great emphasis on size, power, strength, and substance in the Akita breed standard for both dogs and bitches. The two characteristics that distinguish the breed are the large, broad head with erect ears carried forward in line with the back of neck and the large curled tail. Akita dogs should be between 26 and 28 inches at the withers, while the bitches should be between 24 to 26 inches in height. Any dog under 25 inches and any bitch under 23 inches must be disqualified. The Akita is slightly longer than he is tall. The relative proportions of length to height being as 10 is to 9 in dogs and 11 to 9 in bitches. Remember the Akita was bred to be a hunter of large game, so great power, substance and agility should be evident. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Akita with its distinctive head. The head is massive but in balance with the body. It should be free of wrinkle when the dog is at ease. The muzzle is deep. The jaws are square and powerful. There should be a minimal amount of dewlap. The stop is well defined, but not too abrupt. In proportion, the distance from the nose to the stop and from the stop to the occiput should be as two is to three. From the front, you can see that the skull is flat between the ears and broad. The muzzle is also broad and full. There is a shallow furrow that starts at the bottom of the stop and extends well up the forehead. 
This is an example of the more oriental, refined head type. When viewed from above, the head should have the appearance of forming a blunt triangle. This head is overdone in skull. The brow is too heavy. While this one is much too narrow and refined. This muzzle is too long and snipey. Here again is the proper Akita head, with a broad skull, flat between the ears, full cheeks, and square muzzle. The nose is broad and black. White Akitas frequently have lighter pigment of nose, and may even have a liver nose. Black, however, is always the preferred nose color. A butterfly nose is one that is party colored, as seen here. Total lack of pigmentation results in a nose which is completely pink in color. Butterfly noses, or total lack of pigmentation on the nose, are disqualifications. Teeth should meet in a scissors bite like this. A level bite is also permissible, but the scissors bite is preferred. The lips should be black and tight-fitting, never pendulous. The tongue is pink. Noticeably undershot or overshot bites are disqualifying. A very important part of breed type are the Akita's characteristic ears, which are carried slightly forward over the eyes in a smooth curve which follows the back of the neck. They are strongly erect and small in relation to the rest of the head. They should not be too small, however, nor too large. Proper ear length can be checked by folding the ear forward, like this. The tip should touch the upper eye rim. The ears are triangular in shape, slightly rounded at the tip and wide at the base. They are also set wide on the head, but not too low. Frequently seen are ears that are low set and point out to the sides like these, which are incorrect. What about these ears? They are too vertically erect and do not follow the line of the back of the neck. These ears, although set properly, are too long. These are too short. The tip does not reach the upper eye rim. These ears are correct, small in relation to the size of the head and forming a smooth curved line with the back of the neck. Note again the triangular shape rounded tips, and the good width between the ears. Drop and broken ears are disqualifications. This dog's drop ear on the left and broken ear on the right are each disqualifying. The eyes of the Akita should be dark brown in color like this. They should be small, deep set and triangular in shape, with the rims black and tight, not loose. These eyes are too light in color. These are too large and detract from typical Akita expression. While the eyes should be small and deeply set, it is very important that the eyes not be too small, as eyes that are too small and deeply set can cause unhealthy eye conditions in succeeding generations. This male Akita has a head which is correct overall. The head is broad, correctly proportioned, and has the typical small ears. This female Akita also has a lovely head. Though feminine, it nevertheless is powerful and strong. Remember that head type varies somewhat within the breed, ranging from the more refined oriental head to a more substantial appearance. Nonetheless, 
The strong points are the small, correctly carried ears, the small triangular eyes, and the tight lips. Now let us consider the Akita's neck, top line, and body. The neck is thick and muscular. It is comparatively short, widening gradually toward the shoulders, fitting smoothly into the body. The pronounced crest blends in with the base of the skull. It is an essential component of the line which begins with the tip of the ear and curves down the back of the neck, blending into a strong and level top line. This U neck is incorrect. This typical neck blends smoothly into shoulders which are strong and powerful with moderate layback. Moderate layback means that the shoulder blade slopes at about a 50 to 55 degree angle. The upper arm is angled back from the point of shoulder and is about the same length so that the legs are set well under the dog. But this straight shoulder is incorrect. A moderately laid back shoulder is not as upright as this one. This dog also has a very short upper arm. Here again is the proper layback of the shoulder blades and upper arm. The forelegs should be strong, heavy boned and straight. The pasterns should slope at about 15 degrees forward of the vertical for optimum shock absorption. From the front, you can see the strength and power of the shoulders. Loose shoulders are faulty. The chest is broad and well developed. The forelegs are heavy boned and straight like these. Be sure to check carefully as markings can be deceiving. The elbows should turn neither in nor out and the feet should point straight ahead. This dog is narrow in the chest with his elbows in. This bitch is overdone in chest and slightly loaded in shoulder. This bitch's feet turn in, which is not proper. Feet are cat-like and well knuckled up with thick pads. They should point straight ahead on both front and rear legs. Dew claws on the front legs are usually left intact, while those on the hind legs are generally removed. See how the brisket is wide and deep, being about one half the height of the dog at the shoulder. It should drop to the elbow, and the ribs should carry well back, allowing plenty of room for heart and lung function. The Akita should never appear low to the ground, as this one does. The distance from the bottom of the chest to the ground should equal the distance from the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the chest. The body of the Akita should be longer than the dog is tall. Body length is determined as the distance between two vertical lines, one at the point of the shoulder and the other at the point of the buttocks. The ratio is as 10 is to 9 for a male and slightly longer, 11 to 9 in females like this. Note that length of body does not mean length of back nor excess length of loin. Check for correct body proportions without undue length of back. Strong properly angulated forequarters and hindquarters as seen in this dog are necessary. This dog is rangy, an undesirable breed characteristic. Although the length to height ratio may be correct, he lacks depth of body and is insufficiently angulated in the shoulder and hindquarters. This dog's nearly equal length to height proportions are not correct. The Akita is not a square dog. This male's body is slightly longer than tall and is correct. This female is also correct in body proportion. Proper body length will allow for proper length of stride without any interference. The back should be level like this. The short strong loin is firmly muscled and there is moderate tuck up. 
This top line is weak. There is a dip in the back, and the dog is high in the rear, resulting in a top line which slopes up from front to rear and is not correct. This is a fault frequently seen in this breed. A roach back, though less common, is also undesirable. This is a correct level back and strong loin. The Akita's large full tail is one of the most important breed characteristics. It is set high as an extension of the spine and carried over the back in a three-quarter curl like this, a full or double curl. It is important to remember that a large full tail will visually balance the massive head as called for in the standard. The hair on the tail is coarse and full and longer than anywhere else on the body. The tail should not be profusely coated like this, resulting in a plume. This is incorrect. The tail should always dip to or below the level of the back. It may be carried to either side, as seen here with this excellent double curled tail, or directly on top of the back, as seen here with this full curl. On a three-quarter curl, the tip drops well down the side of the flank, as with this dog. The root of the tail is large and strong. When the tail is let down, the tailbone reaches the hock, as you see here. When the dog is at ease, the tail may occasionally be let down, but it should always be carried up over the back when in motion or at attention. This relaxed tail does not reach the level of the hock. It is too short. This tail is excellent overall, with a large, strong root, proper length, and high set. It also has correct hair coat, with no appearance of a plume. This sickle tail is one whose tip does not reach to the level of the back when the dog is in motion or standing at attention. Note that sickle or uncurled tails are to be disqualified. Hindquarters should be comparable to the forequarters in width, muscular development, angulation, and bone, resulting in a well-balanced Akita. The upper thigh should be well-developed and muscular, as seen here. Stifles should be moderately bent, and hocks should be well let down and well-defined. A well-defined hock is one that is strong and shows a definite angle at the joint. A frequently seen fault in Akita's is a straight rear, lacking bend of stifle and definition at the hock joint, as seen in this dog. This correct rear shows both bend of stifle and angle at the hock joint. It is in balance with the front and is muscular and well-boned. From the rear, you can see the broad pelvis and good muscular development of both the first and second thighs. The hocks are well let down and parallel. The Akita has a double coat. The outer coat is straight and harsh, while the undercoat is thick, soft, dense, and shorter than the outer coat. The color of the undercoat may be different from that of the outer coat, the outer coat stands off somewhat from the body. The hair on the head, legs, and ears is short. At the withers and rump, the hair is about two inches long. The coat is longest and most profuse on the tail. An excessively long coat, obviously longer than two inches on withers and rump, is undesirable. Any indication of a ruff on the neck or feathering elsewhere on the body is also faulty. The body coat should not be trimmed. 
This correct coat is straight, with outer coat harsh to the touch, but with a soft, dense undercoat. Note also that the coat is somewhat off-standing, softening, but not changing the rugged outline of muscle and bone. The Akita standard allows for any color, including white, brindle, and pinto, with or without markings. Markings should be well balanced with or without mask or blaze on the face. Well balanced markings are not necessarily symmetrical markings. Quite commonly seen is the fawn with dark mask. White, which has no mask. Brindle, with or without white markings or dark mask. And Pinto, which has a white background with large, evenly placed patches covering the head and more than one-third of the body. This is an undermarked Pinto. Although the markings cover less than one-third of the body, it is an acceptable color. Red, silver, black, and many other colors and shades are also frequently found. Colors should be brilliant and clear. Washed out, faded, or muddied colors are undesirable. The Akita's gait should be brisk and powerful, with strides of moderate length. The Akita was bred as a hunter of large game, so he should be agile and move with a sense of purpose. Short strides, choppy gait, or overall cumbersome movement is incorrect. From the front, the forelegs are carried straight forward, like this and are not thrown out to the side. As with most working dogs, at faster speeds, the Akita will tend to single track. From the rear, the hind legs travel in line with the front legs, with hocks turning neither in nor out. This dog is moving much too wide behind. There is no convergence. This dog elbows out, which makes his feet toe in. This is also incorrect. This is very restricted gait. The dog takes too many steps for the amount of work he expends. Here again is correct movement. Brisk, powerful, purposeful, with moderate strides and no wasted motion. See how the back remains firm and level. Proper assessment is more easily evaluated here as the dog moves on a loose lead with a comfortable head carriage. It is important when judging the gait of the Akita to keep in mind overall balance and harmony of motion. This requires correct body proportions with properly balanced angulation in the forequarters and hindquarters. When you judge the Akita, both dogs and bitches should exemplify dignity and courage. They are alert, responsive, and fearless in nature. They can sometimes be aggressive toward other dogs, but will show remarkable affection and loyalty to their masters. Any aggression in the show ring toward dogs or people cannot be tolerated. It is no wonder that this powerful, intelligent animal is regarded as a national treasure in Japan and is naturally treasured by his devoted followers around the world.